Hey, welcome back. So I've been curious for quite some time about whether or not I have parasites. And in this video, I'm gonna be sharing with you a bit of my health journey, specifically around parasites. My history of having them, or of being paranoid of having them, or both. My recent testing that I did for this from home and what came of that, and then the treatment approach that I'm going to take according to what I found. And I'd like to thank parasites.org for sponsoring this video. They are who I did my home testing through, so stick around for more information on what they're all about as well. So why I've been worried about parasites specifically is because you can find them virtually everywhere in the world. And the thought of having them and not knowing is really alarming. I mean, one, this can't be good for your health. I mean, we know this isn't good for your health. And then two, the thought of it is just so disgusting. <laughs> It's just so gross. And although you can get parasites anywhere in the world, there's obviously definitely some places where you have an increased risk. So here's my deal and why I'm especially worried about this. So I'm originally from Canada, from Edmonton, go Oilers. And now I live in California, in San Francisco, go Warriors. <laughs> and in between, when I left Canada and when I came here to California, I lived in Southeast Asia for eight and a half years. The last two years of that time was spent living in Indonesia, in Jakarta. Go Olympic badminton? <laughs> I don't know what their sports teams are. And Jakarta, if you haven't been there, just to kind of give you a visual, the city and its metro surrounding areas have a population of over 30 million people. That's more people than there are in all of Canada. And in Jakarta, they tell all 30 million of these people to take parasite medication every six months, regardless of whether or not they have symptoms, because in this area, it's virtually impossible to avoid them because they're everywhere. And before that, I lived in Malaysia and Thailand and Cambodia, and I spent a few months doing field work for my master's degree in refugee camps up near the Myanmar border. And I also backpacked through India for a while and been a whole bunch of places that are not really strangers to parasites. Really looking at all of this, it would not be crazy to think that one of my life's goals is to get a parasite infection or maybe multiple parasite infections, like all different flavors from different places. And I have. I know for sure when I was living in Indonesia, I had a couple of parasite infections. I had this show up in tests. And then I also at one point even vomited up a worm. And let me tell you, you have not lived until you've thrown up a worm. And I'm not talking a little worm. I'm talking like a big earthworm, proper kind of worm. It was horrifying and just so disgusting. But what's really incredible about this, for those of you that are currently facing some sort of chronic health challenge, when I finally fully recovered from ME-CFS or chronic fatigue syndrome, it's when I was living in Indonesia. So it was during that two years that I was there all the time I talk about my recovery, it's when I was living there. That's where I did it. A time when I was so full of parasites that I was literally throwing them up. So I feel like if I could recover there, people can recover anywhere. So it's always been in the back of my mind. Are they in there? Again, what is happening inside my body? It's just a really unsettling thing to think about and really unsettling thing to not know the answers to. And I don't just worry about this because of my time in all these different countries. You can get parasites here in the US. You can get them in Canada. You can get them everywhere. But the cool thing is that you can actually now test for these things from home. You didn't used to be able to do this. So I recently did my testing through parasites Org. And it's very simple. You just go to their website, you pick the test that you want. You can get parasite tests, um, bacteria tests. They have a few different options. You order it, it arrives in your mailbox, and then you just do the testing from home and box it back up in the postage prepaid box that they provide for you. And then you drop it in the mail and then just wait for your results. All right, so I'm gonna walk you through exactly what this looked like for me. And I'm gonna show you my results exactly. I'll just share my screen and you can see all the details of what came up in my testing and give you a picture of what exactly this all looks like. First, you just go to their website, parasites.org and select the tests that you'd like to do. They have a few different options for parasites and bacteria, depending on what you wanna get tested. And despite their website looking a bit like it's from 
the 90s. It's not super flashy. It's very easy to navigate and it has all the information that you need. I did the home gut parasite and fungi yeast stool test. And it was at this point that I realized that I actually didn't even know the difference between yeast and fungi. So in case you're also unclear, the main difference is, is that yeast, I've got props, is a unicellular organism, whereas fungi is a multicellular organism. So yeast, uni, fungi, multi. And yeast is actually a type of fungus. So all yeast are fungus, but not all fungus are yeast. And candida is one that we hear about a lot. So which one do you think candida is? If you guessed fungus, you are correct. But if you guessed yeast, you are also correct. It is a yeast, making it also a type of fungus. The at-home test that I did checks for a lot of parasites. When I had done testing before in Canada, I was told that it only tested for two types of parasites which is insane. So this one checked for 31 different kinds, plus five different types of fungus, including candida, and then 11 other markers of digestive health. So it's pretty comprehensive. Now, I didn't record any footage, any B-roll of the testing process. I figured nobody wants to see that. Uh, you're welcome. But I will tell you that as far as stool tests go, and I've done a lot in my lifetime, this one's pretty painless. They give you two little vials where you're going to put your samples and the vial lids have little scoops on top. And then you also get in the kit, these biodegradable plastic bags that stick to your toilet seat. So you don't directly have to touch anything. And then when you're done, everything just flushes down the toilet and then just drop it in the mail and you're done. My results came back pretty fast. I forgot to mark down exactly how long it took, but it was a week or two and I got them and you get a detailed report emailed out to you and then also included when you purchase the kit is a consultation with someone at parasites.org and they go through everything with you. So for my consultation, I met with a guy named Evan and I'm gonna show you little bits of it now cause he allowed me to record it, but he was super nice and really knowledgeable and just patient and just great to deal with for all of this. Each thing that they test for that you see on the list here is given a score from one to four with four being the, the heaviest or the worst infection that you can get and one being the least. And if there's no number beside something, that means that nothing was detected. So we can see my list here with many things that weren't found, but there are a few things that were found. So there are two types of yeast, which we know are types of fungus, and both of those were scoring a one. That included candida. So showing up, but minimal amounts, thankfully. And as for parasites, larval nematode were detected. So I had no idea what that meant. So I was very glad to have Evan to walk me through this and explain what larval nematode were and what this means for me, that these are currently inside my body. Okay, so 30 of the 31 parasites, we didn't see anything. So the only thing we saw is we saw a larval nematode. Okay. So larval nematode, that's a baby roundworm. And unfortunately, because it hasn't developed sex organs yet, we yeah. can't say for sure which roundworm it is. It kind of gets tricky because, you know, so, you know, that water test I was talking about, well, some, some people, they go and they do our parasitic analysis of their water and it comes back completely negative, you know, no bacteria, no algae, no, par no, no parasites. Mm -hmm. But I would venture, I mean, we don't have a huge sample size. Maybe half of them are coming back with positive uh, larval nematodes in their water. And, you know, some, some of these uh, are well water, right? And so it's, you know, tainted well water, untreated, mm -hmm. but some of these are tap water. It's hard to say if like, okay, is this something that maybe was already dead and you drank it? Could this be something that has made its way into you recently and is trying to reach maturity? I don't know. Is this something that is a larval nematode literally for a different species of animal, like say a horse or a pig? Or, or a, you know, uh, some sort of pet, and that it would, and it would never even reach maturity in you because it's just genetically not compatible with you. It's, it's, it's unfortunately the most ambiguous finding that we have. So, okay. um, if you're feeling good, if you're feeling strong, if your digestion's good, 
Mm -hmm. Maybe I wouldn't worry about it, but again, I can't make that decision for right. you. I can't tell you what to do. Right. Um, that's that's sort of up to you and your unique situation, and you're and you got to speak with your medical team and see what they think. Generally, what I took away from my chat with Evan about this was that yes, they are in my body, but we don't know where they came from. We don't know if I'm even the right host for them. It's such a small amount uh, that I don't have any symptoms. I don't have any digestive issues or nausea or anything like that. And it really could have come from anywhere. It probably isn't still there from Asia. It might have just come from my tap water, um, but probably isn't something that's too much to worry about just yet, which is a massive relief. <laughs> some other things they found in my test were some not problematic bacteria and then also some undigested tissue, which I was also very curious about and didn't know what that meant. So basically I was told that this means they found in my test, undigested food. So this could be a sign of some sort of digestive issues that I'm having. It could mean that I could potentially benefit from taking some digestive enzymes, or it could just mean that I'm not chewing my food well enough. And I've always known that I eat too fast. I eat really, really fast. So first I'm just gonna start with trying to slow down and chew my food better because I want to be absorbing the nutrients from that food. Ultimately, that should be why we eat, right? And flavor, but nutrients important. So gonna slow down. My call with Evan was almost an hour. So I got a lot of information. And then they do also offer coaching sessions after that, if that's something that you're interested in. But overall, it was explained to me that what these test results and this initial consultation are mainly meant to be is a sort of jumping off point for you to take these results to a doctor. And if you don't have a doctor who is knowledgeable in treating parasite infections, they have a list of ones that they can recommend. And during my chat with Evan, he also repeatedly highly recommended a book called Digestive Wellness, Strengthen the Immune System and Prevent Disease, through Healthy Digestion, written by Elizabeth Lipsky. And I have since purchased this book and started to read it, and it is excellent. So if you're currently having any kind of digestive issues, this would be a really good book to check out. And he also gave me some recommendations on how I can treat this all naturally, how I can address the yeast that was found in my body and the larvae nematode. I'm not sure if I'm, can't remember if I'm saying that right, but they have a cleanse kit that they have available for purchase and it's called Cleanse Freedom Restore. And there are testimonials on their website from a handful of doctors who have been using this cleanse with their patients to treat parasite infections and it's been effective. So that is really cool to see. Overall, I'm generally skeptical about supplements. I, I'm not usually too excited about the idea of taking them. I've taken so many in my life. I've spent so much money and I've never really seen a lot of great results. But when I hear from other people that they are having good results, I, like, I'm working to not get too jaded and try and stay open-minded to things and not be closed off to things just because of whatever experience I've had in the past. So I am giving this cleanse a try. I started it a couple weeks ago and uh, we'll see how it goes. And it comes with a lot of information and suggestions on changes you can make in your life to help the cleanse go better. Things around like diet and sleep and mental health and so forth. And when you purchase the cleanse, it also comes with a included 30 minute consultation with someone from parasites.org to help you really understand how to do the cleanse uh, properly. So if you too are also curious about whether or not you might currently have parasites, if you live in Canada or the US, you can go to parasites.org. You can use the affiliate link in this video description and get a slight discount on the test kit of your choosing. And if you live outside of Canada or the US, but you would like to get some sort of parasite testing done, I would still take a couple of minutes and do a Google search because this sort of at-home testing industry is absolutely booming right now and they are popping up all over the place. So there's a really good chance that if this specific one isn't available to you, I think they also do Australia as well, but the shipping's a bit pricey. Um, but if you're outside of these three areas, there's a good chance that there will be something available where you live also. Well, there you have it. Now you know what's swimming around in my gut and what I'm doing about it. And whatever 
you're currently facing right now, whatever challenges life might be throwing your way. I just hope that you are being kind and compassionate and patient with yourself and that you hang in there and keep going because you have totally got this. You know that you do. Just one small little change at a time, that's all you ever really have to do. Just keep moving forward. How fast doesn't matter. Just keep moving forward. Keep searching for the pieces of your puzzle. Keep trying new things and one small thing at a time and you'll get there. I really believe that you will. So I'm sending big hugs to you. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.